Behind this grey-white front lies an exceptional, colourful past. Namely, one of the most sensational revolutionary residential buildings in Dutch architectural history, Justus van Effen, arising from the brain of the Rotterdam architect Michiel Brinkman. In 1918, August Plate, director of the Municipal Housing Department, commissioned Michiel Brinkman to design a large block of 264 social houses in the Spangen district of Rotterdam. Plate wanted to create accommodation for skilled workers. The housing shortage had hugely increased. By constructing a large number of buildings in Spangen, the shortage would be virtually solved at a stroke. A social idea with its origins in the views of the social democrat Henrik Spiekman. Since 1917, thanks to Spiekman, social housing was the responsibility of the municipality. Besides being a social idea, it was a huge challenge. Namely, all the housing had to be built on an area of scarcely one hectare, while on the other hand, the homes had to avoid the disadvantages of living in small, cramped spaces in the large city. What flowed from the architect Michiel Brinkmann's pen was revolutionary for the period. Brinkmann designed an enclosed, robust housing block over four floors. The upper dwellings had wide galleries. These upper avenues emerged onto a public street, suspended in the air, as it were. This had never been seen before. Thanks to wide streets, residents had a feeling of living in a detached house. What's more, the baker could easily pass by the front door. Brinkman also created a large inner courtyard, with benches, trees and public lighting. There was space to play and meet. At the same time, the communal facilities were attractive, a luxury in those days. Domestic rubbish was centrally collected by chutes. There was block heating. Washing, ironing, drying and bathing took place in the bathhouse, the bright focus of the complex. The starting points may have been clear and the idea innovative, but Eustace von Effen was not undisputed. That appears in the heated discussions in the Rotterdam Council in 1920. Opponents were concerned about the flat roof on the building. Wouldn't that cause accidents? Or even worse, shameless sunbathing. Mayor Zimmermann, a fervent opponent, said about the galleries, All I can see is problems between neighbours, immorality, and perhaps even danger. Haykope, a supporter and alderman, stood his ground. Eustace von Effen must be built. Finally, he got the support of 30 council members. 11 voted against. Eustace von Effen was a fact. Construction began in 1921. Industrious workers began driving many wooden piles. Then concrete was poured for the building cellars. After which, bricks were laid day in, day out for the long high walls. The shape of Eustace van Effen began to become visible. The wooden floors and roofs were laid, as well as the wide upper avenues. It was an enormous task which was carried out at speed. In 1922, the housing complex with no less than 264 dwellings was completed. Brinkman's central idea certainly proved to be a success initially. Families with sometimes three or more children lived happily next to each other. The galleries and communal facilities bound them together. Many children grew up here. They played and interacted with each other. The playpen was happily pushed aside when the milkman came along with his handcart. Here on the balcony, many families celebrated a wedding. Here, many proud fathers posed with their offspring. Here, life was like a stroll with the pram on a warm spring day, or a bicycle trip with friends in the sun. The years passed, and the glory of the past faded. The homes turned out to be too small for families and became empty. Children no longer played on the balconies, and the bathhouse closed its doors. The then residents pleaded for urban renewal. That happened in the 80s through a number of drastic changes. The most stunning was the new colour, white, dazzling white, but not for long. The complex was soon stripped of its new colour, white soon turned to grey. The beautiful window profiles were lost through the application of plastic frames. Former residents reflect in sadness and even with a little pain in their heart on the flourishing, colourful past of the once so revolutionary housing block in Spangen. The housing complex full of great expectations. One of them painted it in its original condition, 
so beautiful, so colourful, so full of life. The Eustace Van Effen building is now being restored to its former glory. Initially that means considerable home renovation. The current 164 dwellings are being reduced to 154. They will be fitted in various types and sizes. There will be two floor homes, large compact studios and even four large homes with four floors, all fitted out to a high degree. Besides this, the inner courtyard will be tackled and will be given a green contemporary character. There will also be a new communal function for the bathhouse, just as architect Rinkman desired in the past. Eustace von Effen will regain the colour and dynamic of the past with the facilities and residents of today.